Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to today's ride. We are here riding our gravel bikes again. This is one week after the Toad Strangler and I didn't really get it on camera after that event. So today I'll be talking about how I did. workout is going to be five by fives at threshold and then recovery in between and then another five by five at the end of the ride and this is to sim simulate uh, a long gravel race like what we're doing in Farmer's Daughter where it's probably going to be kind of hard in the beginning and then towards the end so yeah we're gonna do or I'm gonna do a zone two in the middle and do the five by fives kind of butted at each end of the uh, the ride while I recover I'm gonna talk to you about my uh, toad strangler experience it is uh, pretty chilly today I wasn't expecting it to be this chilly. This is a little uh, disappointing. I thought it was gonna be warm this weekend, but oh well, still gotta get the ride done. Uh, today, I'm doing some long tempo intervals that I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one toward the beginning of the ride shortly, and then another one at the end of the ride and I might do a third in between in the middle somewhere, but I definitely want to get in at least a couple of long tempo intervals in the beginning and end of the ride. As you know, or you can recall from our previous ride, that I was riding with a hydration bladder in a frame bag, and that's what I ran at Toad Strangler. And man, there are a lot of people losing their bottles on that ride because, as Jason mentioned, the roads were unmaintained and so it was super potholy, lots of little ripples, and washboardy. And because of that, people were losing their bottles. And luckily for me, since I didn't have bottles, I was just able to ride. I did have one mechanical with my chain getting sucked into my uh, cassette as I was riding up a steep climb. And so hopped off, fixed the chain, and then pushed the bike up the hill because it was too steep of a climb and hopped on at the top of the hill. So that was only, that was the only mechanical I had. Other than that, the hydration bladder worked out. crossing I hope you went in the middle of the rapid there. No, no. <laughs> actually went over. I forgot to hit the lap button. Got kind of carried away. Uh. Oh god.
Oh gosh, we have like a steep hill after this. So, so much for recovery. Oh boy. Last effort. I went over by 40, 30 seconds on that last effort. I had the map on and for some reason I thought it was going to notify me of when my effort was going to end or there was like 10 seconds left but I forgot I didn't have the workout loaded on this so I have to manually hit the lap button yeah that was uh my preference was to hit the just do it manually because I have a little bit of control of when to hit the lap button but this time I actually needed the automated version of this. So the next climb is a dirt climb on Deep Hollow Road. So we're in New York now. And there's a climb ugh, over here. And I'm just gonna take it easy and just do a little bit more of recovery before I hit the next interval. I decided I want to do the four by five minutes because my recovery there, the last interval was too long. To give you guys some other information about the Toad Strangler event, super fun. I was feeling pretty good in the first half of the ride. I actually looked down at the Wahoo and noticed I did uh, 152 watts, average speed 15 and a half, and I was uh, pretty stoked about that. I didn't PR my 90 minute power because I knew there was more climbing on the second half, so I was trying to save myself for the second half, but it started to get warm. The forecast had said cloudy, like today, in the 70s, and I have a, I don't know if, I, if you would call it severe intolerance but I had a pretty uh, negative reaction to the heat so it wasn't that hot though but my body was overheating and I felt really off I had a handful of gummies and for some reason my stomach couldn't digest it quick enough which is unusual because I typically have gummies on my rides and no problem so I think what happened was uh, because I was overheating my heart was pumping really fast my heart rate was really high but I didn't realize this because I didn't look at my heart rate, which is kind of good that I didn't. Otherwise, I'd have been pretty alarmed and scaled back even more. But I finished the ride averaging 181 beats per minute, almost three hours at that heart rate, which is crazy. But my legs felt fine. I wasn't breathing super heavy. I just couldn't get my drink and my gummies down. And uh, so it was kind of like sitting in my stomach and it felt so awkward to have that just sitting in my stomach. And I felt like I wanted to throw up, but I couldn't. So I think one of the things that I need to do is learn to manage my the heat in my body. Well, that's my assignment 
for farmer's daughter is just not manage my body temperature uh, if you have any suggestions on how I can do that I have some ideas uh, it's not the first time that I've had this issue but it is the first time that I'm actually thinking about doing something about it workout go? It went well. Um, I, I did a tempo interval of about 21 minutes. Um, I did have to, to stop pedaling one time. I think it was after about 15 minutes or so. I came up on that first stop sign or right hand side. Yeah, yeah. I lost power on that too. Yeah, I, I could have sworn I was going to be able to finish off full 22 minutes before getting to the end of Bach Hollow. Yeah. But I was wrong about that. Uh, well, we had a tailwind. Oh, maybe. Maybe that's why. So, so yeah, the interval got chopped up a little bit, but then after I uh, made that right-hand turn, I started back up again. And, and then the, that second stop sign with the left-hand turn came up about... 21 minutes uh -huh. into my interval, so I just I just ended the interval there. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how low my heart rate stays when I'm cold. Mm -hmm. It took like 15 minutes. It wasn't until 15 minutes into the interval that my heart rate got into zone three. Even though I was doing like I think my average power was like 216, which is you know right in the tempo zone. Trying to do high cadence, warm myself up, which which did did seem to work. Cause now I feel better. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just surprised. Like my heart rate just stayed in zone two most of the time. And I was like, that'd be kind of nice actually if I could do that kind of power in zone two all the time. But I think it's only because my because of the cold, my heart rate is staying down. guys could see Jason is has the frame bag also oh, someone yeah. is a convert yeah I, for, I forgot to mention that I'm trying this out today because because of what happened at the toad, toad strangler where um, I lost my water bottles my water bottles fell out after hitting a pothole um, once early in the ride and then they actually fell out again a second time later which I didn't even hit a pothole the second time. I was just kind of a bumpy downhill. And oh, I didn't know you had you lost it twice. Yeah, I lost it a second Both? time. Well, just one of them. The oh, okay. Time. But and that one didn't take as long to find. But after that, um, I'm uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying this this setup out because I don't want to lose five minutes. Uh, in a race situation, I don't want to lose five minutes searching for my bottles. So I'm uh, I'm still pretty awkward trying to drink from this um, hydration bladder setup, but I'll probably be used to it eventually. Yeah, if you guys wanted to practice this or try it out, I actually. Uh, practice it on the trainer first uh, in the winter time and I had a small frame bag attached to my bike on the trainer and that's what I was doing 
over the winter is practicing drinking from it. Despite not feeling well on that ride um, with having such a high heart rate that I think is worth celebrating um, is that Jason did well. He, um, he averaged 190 watts over the course of a three hour ride or the three hour event. For me, I was pretty happy with how I ended it. I finished as strong as I could. Um, I averaged 136 watts or I believe 137 watts, which in hindsight, when looking back at it, I think I could have done a harder effort had my heart rate not been so high. Um, I, you know, there was that, I didn't look at my heart rate throughout the ride, but I knew something was off, so I scaled back. And so if I had felt better, like today would be the perfect temperature for, for that event, but obviously we can't control that. Um, but it's, you know, I felt really strong and I finished strong and my goal time was three and a half hours. And it's funny because I put all this information in chat GPT and I had my average power and it calculated the speed based on the terrain and, um, and elevation, the amount of climbing on that course. And it spat, spit out like three and a half or three, three hours and 15 minutes. But I said, just give myself 15 minutes just in case something happens um, and you know I needed that extra time so I, I had a little extra buffer there so I did three and a half hours that was my goal but I actually finished in two hours and 56 minutes so I was really happy with that I initially was going to do another four by five minutes unfortunately that wasn't the case because my legs started to feel tired towards the end and I figured I will do I'll do the 20 two minute tempo that Jason was doing. The downside was that I couldn't do that because there was too much draft behind Jason and I tried to pass him, but then he had too much draft behind me. And so it was kind of hard to do, um, you know, to do that even side by side on, on uh, a main road. And so it's always a struggle with me doing outdoor workouts. I have to, it, it really, really have to find a, a quiet road with less traffic and less left turns uh, and stop signs because you know you also want to make sure that you are you're safe it's supposed to rain tomorrow too so we're gonna have to ride indoors unfortunately it's been so hard to just to get the motivation to ride inside because you know I've just been spoiled by riding outside and it's just more fun also if you have any questions about anything that we did for toad strangler it was not a spectacular finish um, I think I may have finished third in my age group. I can't for, say for certain because, you know, it's through Strava and so some people might not have Strava and this event didn't have chip timing because technically it wasn't a race, even though we treated it as one, but i um, pretty happy with that if, you know, whoever, uh, you know, whoever logs their rides on Strava, I was pretty happy with that and I think I also got um, ninth women uh, so yeah pretty stoked with that also anyway thanks again guys and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to, to our videos to support the channel and don't forget to enjoy your rides bye bye